Hello and welcome to the Destination Sailing Channel on Yachting International Radio. I'm Carla. And I'm Simon. And we are from the YouTube sailing channel Sailing Ocean Fox. Over the past three years we've sailed over 25,000 miles on our catamaran through the Mediterranean, across the Atlantic and the Caribbean. In this series we will be looking at some of our favourite islands, towns and remote caves we have visited during our adventure. This will give you a fresh insight on your next destination, what to expect on arrival, places to stay, things to do and how to find those all important provisions from propane to bananas. So let's start with this week's location which is Los Roques. Yeah we last visited there uh, in the summer of 20. 19 as we're avoiding the hurricane season. Um, it's located around about 100 miles north of Caracas and three day, days sailing west of Grenada. Mm -hmm. Ooh, down yeah. Pirate Alley. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It is. Need to take a few precautions there if you're going on that track. Yeah. Uh, but that is absolutely a fantastic sail, isn't it? Fantastic yeah. sail. Yeah. It's fantastic. Sail. Amazing, yeah. 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 yeah, especially in a cat. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so Los Roques is made up of around about 350 islands and caves. It's been a national park uh, since 1972. Yes, covers an area of 15 square miles. It has 580 square miles of coral reefs. Yeah, there's a lot more reef there than uh, in one island. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to watch out for the reefs. There's no question about that. Yeah. It's home to 1,500 people and has about 70,000 visitors a year. It's a very, very low uh, country, very low, apart from uh, La Gran Roques, which has uh, an overall height of 37 metres, about 115 feet. Yes. And that's the first thing that you see, isn't it, as you yes. approach from the west, yeah. um, fr from the east, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So the language is Spanish, so it's a good place for you to start practicing your Spanish if you're learning. Yeah. <laughs> Do they speak proper Spanish there? Yes. Or have, do they have quite a strong dialect? Uh, no, yeah, I think they speak pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it? very good. Uh, COVID, there's bound to be some COVID restrictions, so um, please check with noon side uh, to see what the latest situation is. The weather. The weather. The climate is warm and dry, with average annual temperature of 27.3 Celsius degrees, 81.1 Fahrenheit in July and August reaches a maximum of 34 degrees. Yeah, it's basically uh, typical Caribbean weather really, yeah. isn't it? But it's out of the uh, hurricane belt. It's out of um, the hurricane belt, which is good. Good, yeah. And uh, if you are planning to try and find somewhere, Los Roques is a great place uh, for a couple of weeks and then you've got the ABC Islands a little bit further down the road. Yeah. And uh, they're all quite but easy don't, to get to. Yeah, but don't rush to go there. Just no. stay in uh, Los Roques as Absolutely. much as possible. Absolutely. It, it is, is paradise. It is paradise yeah. in the Caribbean. Uh, the currency is the Venezuelan Bolivia. Is that correct? Bolivar. Bolivar. <laughs> Thank you. And it's around about 10 of those uh, to the US dollar. So uh, they'll basically take any money they can get. They will take on. anything. Yeah. If you have dollars, they will be happy to yeah, take the dollars. Yeah, they'll be very happy. Yeah. Um, regarding navigation. Now, uh, this is what I've described is very interesting. <laughs> Uh, basically, the whole islands or islands, the, uh, the archipelago, is split into three zones. And uh, zone uh, one, is, you basically you can't get there at all. Uh, that you can only actually go to zone two and zone three. And what you can do in some of those zones are restricted. But you mustn't uh, rely on your charts. Uh, we were going to come in from the east um, through a little uh, channel and as we got closer to it we realised that uh, where the Navionics chart said the channel was uh, was most definitely reef and the waves were breaking on it and the channel was uh, further away. So we decided to scrap that idea and in fact we went all the way around the back of um, uh, Grand Rock has just to make sure that we were safe. Yeah. Uh, we could have come in between uh, actually uh, there is a good route through um, but uh, we, we didn't want to time. risk yeah no, we took another yeah. it was another hour wasn't it? Yeah it, it was another hour but, but it was um, it was well worth uh, doing that. You need to have somebody on the bars the whole time, don't you? Yeah. Uh, really watching where you're going and uh, being square. Yeah. Um, voyage. There are some voyage uh, there actually. It's region B, so the green square tops 
are will be on the left hand side as you approach. Um, there, there's some voyage between uh, La Grande Roques and the other islands there and uh, it was pretty good actually. I'm not sure whether they had lights on but uh, during the day they were pretty good. So this brings us on to checking. checking. Now there, there this is a whole experience yeah. and you know uh, you're going to have to take this one slowly, be patient and allow most of the day. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you first gonna be approached by the harbor master, which he's gonna get. Jose. Jose is his Jose, name. Jose, yeah. Yeah. Which he's very relaxed person. He's gonna try to take you fifty dollars, saying that's the first fee you have yeah. to pay, and don't do it. Just say no. First, I have to go to satin. The satin that's, is uh, the, the, the official. The official. That's a, it's not called satin. That's the. Uh, yeah, that's the initials, initials yeah. for it. Um, they're up by the airport, aren't they? Yes, yeah. so just by the airport, and they are the official people that you have to start paying it. So yes. anyone trying to get you money before that, just say, I will come back to you later, let me go to Satin first. Yeah. Just say that. They, they are very pleasant, they won't refuse, they won't say, no, you have to do it here or anything. No. no. If you contest, you just, yeah, yeah you can't. The thing is, when you actually drop your anchor off Grand Rock S, um, there's a, a, a blue floating dinghy dock and uh, that's the place which you're automatically attracted to go to and that is right next door to Jose's office yes so consequently he's there because yeah. there's only one boat turns up every two or three days yeah. and uh, so he sort of comes out and grabs you is delightful actually yeah and he fills in a couple of forms and charges you uh, fifty dollars which we paid for because well, we didn't know we didn't know. but he gave us back yeah. at the end, at the end. Um, then uh, oh hello Dobby you've come to say hello this is Dobby by the way if you haven't met him before um, the next place we went to was customs, customs now right. you don't pay at customs do no, you? no no he was very strict wasn't it he's he was a, very strict very uh, his uniform you yeah. know and he was very you know yeah. this is the form you fill the form up yeah. and they gave us and they said you're free to go and he kind of had this big book which uh, must have had about 500 pages in over the last been filled in probably for the last 40 or 50 years or something with ships names and uh, he, he uh, had a little Honda generator going so the room was nice and chill because they don't have electricity during the day. No, they don't. There's no electricity in the day because they don't have enough fuel to power the uh, generators, the main generators on yeah. the island. So just going back to, uh, so we've done Harbour Master, Custom, then we've done Customs. Customs. And then you go finally go to Satin, which yeah. you, you have to walk a, along the road up to the end of the island and you'll find the airport and it's just on the left side. And they're in they a sort of cabin, A container. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 mm. uh, now they were very helpful actually. Very, weren't? very helpful because by that time uh, they charged us around $200. We didn't have the money because we already paid 50 to Jose. Yeah. And then uh, they worked out the measure of the boat and the number of per persons on board for the money we had. <laughs> yeah, so they did a sort of recalculation <laughs> and uh, said, well, okay, we'll just say your boat's 30 foot long and there's only one person on board and then you've got enough money to pay us. Yes. But she made it very clear, we mustn't pay anybody else. Yes, she no. said, don't, play, don't pay anyone else, just start paying here. Here is the only, only place, place you you're going to have to And pay. she distributes some money to all the other different departments. That's yes, actually how it works. That's how, how it works. So after you've been to uh, Satam and paid your uh, money there, you then go to immigration, which is across the road yes. in a house. Yes. And uh, even though the guy there knows that he mustn't take any money off you, uh, he wants 20 US dollars each. He kind of takes your passport and says, do you want me to put a stamp in them or not? Because obviously some people don't want to admit they've been to uh, Venezuela because this is part of Venezuela. Yeah. And uh, anyway, we went, yeah, that's fine. We, well, we're quite happy. We don't have a problem with it. Uh, before he gave us it back, he said, I want 20 US dollars each. Uh, for the passports, but he knows he's not allowed to charge you. Yeah. Yeah. But he still does. And he knew we didn't have any money too yeah. because he was at the other office. Yeah. So he was happy to take any other money we so had. So he had some uh, Eastern Caribbean dollars, which amounted to about five. So uh, after that, you then go back to the boat, and you get uh, caught by the uh, coast guard. Coast guard, which he says he has to make an inspection on, on your boat and you have to pay him fifty dollars too and by that time we already knew we don't, we no. don't have to pay anyone yeah. else so we told him no 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 no. we were told at satin that we don't have to pay anything and he said oh okay so we have a party tonight if you can give us you know a bottle some of rum bottle of rum for the party said, we don't have rum we have beer and he said no i don't want beer no. so we settled <laughs> on a bottle of red wine 
Um, the boat inspection is uh, a matter of them filling a form out and quite honestly they don't even bother to look at the boat they just tick various things on the form and ask for some contribution. Yeah. I mean, the, these, these are, this island is very poor um, they, they don't have much money they don't have a lot of things and uh, uh, everybody is trying to make a little bit of money on the side. But they are very friendly, yeah, very, yeah. very friendly. They are very pleasant to you. They are never rude to you. No. Even if you don't want to give them no. any money, they are still yeah. happy about Absolutely. it. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? Just... So let's move on to uh, all those necessary things that you may wish to acquire when you're somewhere new. <laughs> uh, so let's just start with the vet cats and dogs. Nothing no, happens. Nothing happens with that. So you're fine to take your dog or yeah. your cat. Yeah, nobody's going to worry about that, I don't think. Uh, dinky dogs. Well, as I said, there is one in uh, Grand Rock Rock S, but after that. Grand Rock, isn't it? Grand Rock. Grand Rock. Rock. Uh, Grand Rock. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a blue planting, uh, floating pontoon, yeah. and you can tie up there. But quite honestly, everywhere else, you just uh, beach fine. the dinghy. Yeah. yeah, you don't really need to ask. Um, there's no sort of proper fuel pumps or anything but yeah. I guess they must have some fuel somewhere because there's a lot of fishermen and things with uh, outboard motors and tripping boats. Probably something so, you can arrange with the harbour master. Harbour master, Jose, go see him. Likewise with propane, I don't even know whether you'll find propane. No. But this is this is how remote these islands are. It's very very remote, yeah. yes. Yeah. And a supermarket, Carla. Supermarket! <laughs> <laughs> you have a small shop in town with nothing there. Yeah. You had they had like lemons, uh, uh, tin, few tins of stuff, didn't they? Yeah, but not and a it very was incredibly expensive. Not, yes, yeah. 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 Don't count on buying no, anything. You're gonna have to there. take everything with you. you take, take everything, everything yeah. with you. Yeah. Um, things like charging <laughs> and hardware, um, they must have some on the island, but you're not gonna find a shop or anything mm. like that. But uh, just along, um, slightly east of the uh, uh, the dinghy dock. There's an area where they do seem to, the locals seem to service their boats and repair them. So I guess, um, you know, you just have to go and ask or go back to Jose and say, I need a spark yeah. plug for my outboard or whatever yeah. it happens to be. <clears throat> um, there's no boatyard as such, as far as I'm aware, but yeah. um, there may be possible to uh, try something out if you need to. So this is probably one of the most remote places in the Caribbean yeah. isn't it and equally and is one of the most beautiful most beautiful places and it's safe we felt yeah. safe we never felt yeah. that we're gonna have you know problems or anything no. and everyone we met on that island they said this island is safe this is yeah. safe here is safe yeah. you don't have problems and we never had problems honestly no. and all the cruisers we met on the way that went there they said the same yeah. thing so as we said is uh, 350 <coughs> islands and K's so uh, regarding main highlands main harbours, islands and anchorages, uh, we're actually just going to sort of run through uh, the places that we went to because it is obviously with that many islands there are hundreds of places that you could go. The kind of centre area um, uh, where the lagoon is, it might be too shallow. We tried to venture in there, we drew 1.2 metres and to be honest we got quite scared uh, after about a quarter of a mile. There's a lot of bombers around uh, it is absolutely stunning. Um, even the clouds are, are blue, bluey green colour because of the. Uh, and the birds, reflection. the birds are green underneath. Yeah, isn't it's it? absolutely stunning. Beautiful. Yeah. The wildlife is amazing. If you are into wildlife and see that, yeah. it's just amazing, yeah. amazing. So let's run through where we went. Uh, so from um, Grand Rocks, we went off off. Uh, Fransky. To Fransky, which is uh, there's, there's about four islands in a little uh, curve, it gives you a sort of big bay area. You have to go over quite a shallow area to get there. Um, but then uh, we dropped our anchor there, and this was absolutely out of this world, wasn't it? Yes, uh, absolutely stunning. Um, there was a little sandbar going out, which you walked along, and yeah. things like that. There's a kite surfing, a couple of kite surfing schools there, because kite surfing is quite big. Yeah, on the, the kite island. surfing schools are in the middle of the water. Yeah. you know the yeah with, uh, on stilts. Yeah, yeah absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Um, there was quite a lot of yachts there, which were abandoned and sunk. And I did make some inquiries, and they said that uh, they used to be there, belonged to uh, wealthy Venezuelan people, but um, you know, with all the problems and situations, they've been kind of abandoned and uh, in some storms they've dragged their anchors or their mooring is broken. Um, but I think they're pretty well uh, written off, to be honest. Uh, we spent a couple of nights up there, absolutely stunning, loved it to bits. Uh, then the next uh, island we went to was Kransky. Yes. Uh, this is where 
you've got uh, the islands around about three miles long and it has the most beautiful beach you've ever seen in your yes, life beautiful. i mean the whole one side is one beach and you can walk along there for hours the sand is so white yeah. so white yeah. yeah yeah and the water is so clear yeah. the blues are stunning and you can you can just see uh, starfish see, yeah, there starfish the rays, rays just yeah, swimming along just, with you yeah, everything's so yeah. friendly they're not yeah. they're not scared of you yeah, are they because there's beings. probably not many people no, there no yeah. Um, we stayed there a few nights uh, and we were completely isolated on our own. The first time we went actually there was a couple of other boats. Um, what you find happens is that people turn up in the den and they go, don't they? They go, yeah, yeah. it's a day yeah. trip, yeah. yeah. Then Keo Filippo. Um, this is a, a, a little inlet really, like a little mangrove inlet. And uh, we managed to um, find a, a little beach there and we dropped the anchor and took a line ashore. Yeah. Uh, wow, that was beautiful. Also. Yeah, we could walk to yeah. to the beach yeah. from the boat, yeah. and we had a beach barbecue there. Beach barbecue oh, there. Most beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. A sunset. massive starfish, massive starfish, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Just sitting there yeah. in the shallows. Yeah. Um, absolutely uh, gorgeous. The locals uh, do use part of that island as a bit of a trash bin, don't they? They do because mm -hmm. they do the day trips. If they they have these uh, organized day trips that they do with uh, uh, tourists. And then they leave the trash there, which is sad. Yeah, which is sad. sad. Yeah. But uh, taking that apart, um, it, it is an absolutely yeah. uh, stunning location. And uh, I think there was two other boats in the anchorage uh, when we were there. Now, the next place that uh, we went to was uh, Dos Mosquitos. Dos Mosquitos, yeah. Uh, which is the two mosquito islands uh, down on the sort of south side of the archipelago. Uh, where we will find, and we'll talk about it in a minute, the mm -hmm. uh, turtle sanctuary. Turtle sanctuary, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then our last stop was Cayo de Agua. Cayo de Agua. Yep, which uh, is uh, two islands linked with this enormous sandbar. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. everything everything you have to say about that place is just beautiful. It's, it is paradise. It is yeah. the most beautiful place we found yeah. in the Caribbean. Yeah, it's uh, probably more like somewhere you would uh, meet out in the uh, Pacific Ocean mm -hmm. than in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And it's the only atoll structure uh, in the Caribbean. So uh, it is absolutely stunning. So what to see and do? Well, we just said it's the most beautiful place in, in the Caribbean. The Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're repeating ourselves, but guys, if, if that is on your route, if you're going down to the ABC Islands to get away of the hurricane season, stop there. Stop there. You yeah. won't have a problem no, there. No. You might have problems on the way there because it's a pirate, um, it's a pirate zone. area off, uh, off um, Venezuela. But what we did was uh, we kind of went a bit further north and then dropped back down again. So we were. Yeah, we kept uh, 150, 150, mile, 150 miles off the coast. Off the coast. Yeah. yeah. And we actually didn't have a problem whatsoever, yeah. and I haven't actually come across anybody having a problem. No. Uh, I want to go back one day. Though. Yeah, I'd love to go back. Uh, this would be the number one place I would go, yeah. I have to say. So, uh, a lot of uh, wealthy Venezuelans uh, come to uh, La Roques, and uh, they come from air on the aircraft, and uh, there are some small hotels um, in the main town isn't yeah, there where yes. you can stay yeah. and then what people do is they they get one of the local people to take them out in a boat mm -hmm. so uh they go out at nine o'clock in the morning and then they bring you back from the islands around yeah. four in the afternoon those little boats that are called los pineros mm -hmm. very good <laughs> Uh, and uh, they set you up with an umbrella and a couple of chairs and a big cooler with all your yeah, food and Yeah, it's kind of a pack so, yeah. because they bring yeah. the, the cooler with the food. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, you basically you spend a, a day on the beach in some very, very remote place. Yeah. And I know that it's not necessarily what everybody wants to go to a remote place, I understand that, but this is so beautiful yeah. and so unspoiled. So unspoiled. That, yes. you know, this place is an absolute gem and it really, really is worth a, a, a good visit. Yeah. Uh, there used to be, or there still is a lot of uh, kite surfing. Kite surfing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a really good spot for kite surfing. Yeah. yeah, because you've got the trade winds blowing, so they're blowing at 25, 30 knots, and you've got dead flat water and shallows and things like that. Um, but apparently people used to go from Bonaire on the weekends to go kite surfing. Yeah, yeah but, but then the borders, the borders closed. closed. Yeah. 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 Uh, diving is another big thing. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously swimming, swimming and bird watching. Bird watching. Mm, yeah, because uh, the bird life there is just amazing. I haven't yeah. seen anything like it anywhere. No. I think it's because there's a lack of people. 
that therefore there are so many birds around yeah. because they haven't been uh, yeah. you know ca caught and uh, yeah. various things like that Probably. and uh, the whole place is absolutely full of them uh, yeah. absolutely incredible yeah. and then you have the third century like we said before and uh, so we found this i really wanted to go and visit so when we got there we found this guy looking after the third century he was left there they are supposed to swap him every four weeks, yes. you know, but they forgot him. It was five weeks and the guy was there by himself. Um, he didn't have any food. He showed us his fridge, his cupboard, he showed us everything. He didn't have any food, anything. So we went back to the boat, we got him a big bag of uh, food, we food. got shirts, we gave him money. Because DVDs. Yes, yeah. DVDs. So because the guy was just left there was so sad to see it was very yeah. emotional wasn't yeah it? it was very emotional and he actually earns eight us dollars a month. a month that's what he gets paid and he lives on the island on his own and then uh he basically should do uh, uh four weeks on four weeks off but um as we say nobody had been out there no. and uh he he was totally on his own isolated uh, it was really quite sad. He was so delightful though, wasn't he? He was. And then yeah. when we went back to bring him the stuff, he um, actually, the, 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 the people came. The rescue boat the, came. The rescue boat yeah. came. And he looked at us and said, you brought me luck. No, no. It was a real tearjerker. Yeah. Real tearjerker. Yeah. Um, absolutely worth going to see. Uh, he knows everything good. about turtles. You have all yeah. the things that, that he looks after. He knows every single thing you want to know about turtles. Mm -hmm. The guy knows. This is, uh, for us, our favourite place in the Caribbean yeah. by far. Um, it's a wonderful uh, place to visit. You really feel like you're going back in time. I mean, for example, in the main town, all the roads are just sand. There's no, uh, no asphalt yeah. or anything like no, that. No. Uh, the people are all terribly cheerful, it's very terrible, happy. Very, very happy people, very yeah. nice people, yeah. yes. Uh, it's, it's it a, is, a, a again, place. it is a safe place to go. Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't tell you if it's not. I no. mean, we've been in no. other places that we check in and out at the same day. This place, we wish we stayed there for a month. Yeah, we really wish we do. We had a bit of an issue uh, over insurance. Our insurance company um, would only give us insurance for two weeks to go there because it is Venezuela. Uh, we left after about 10 days because there was a bit of a blow coming through and we were just a bit concerned because it is very, very flat. And uh, though you've got protection from the uh, waves building up, um, you don't have any protection from the wind at all. Uh, we, we, we then sailed directly to Bonaire, which we did in a, a day, I think. Uh, I think we left first thing in the morning. Well, we left the previous day. I think we did an overnight down to Bonaire, and we got in just before dark. Just before we? dark, yeah. Um, and the next morning we went to check in, and they wouldn't uh, accept Let us. us no. So we had to spend a couple of hours um, arguing and talking. So, so if you do that and the borders are still closed, just don't get your passport no. stamped and don't tell them you have been in um, in uh, Los no. Rocas before. No. No. Just tell him your just last spot was Grenada or Grenada. something. Grenada, yeah, just get yourself out of Grenada. Because they never look yeah. at dates on no. the passport, yeah. so they just want to know where was your last spot. So just yeah. <laughs> just get yourself from um, uh, Grenada and yeah. get them to fill it out that you're going uh, to Bonaire and stop off at the Rockcast. Rockcast won't ask for any uh, Zarp or anything. No, 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 no. They won't want to know no. uh, anything about it at all. Mm. Um, fantastic location. Fantastic. It, it, you know, if you're going that way, it really is worth the place to stop. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. And you could so easily spend a month there or two months there, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Uh, so long as you've got enough provisions. Well, water maker would be essential. Yeah, essential. Yeah. essential. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 We met people that stayed there three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely brilliant. So yeah, thank you very much for listening out to our channel on Yacht International Radio. Just a reminder that you can see our adventure on YouTube at Sailing Ocean Fox. And we will put the link below to the episodes that we have been there. Thank you. Uh, so next week we will be going to Cartagena. Cartagena, we are back in the Met. Yeah, back in the Met. And this is a wonderful city to go and discover. Yeah, very nice. This is Simon and Carla from Sailing Ocean Fox on Yachting International Radio. Until next week, fair, fair winds, winds, wherever you are.